told Terry before the service, I said, I'm singing in the choir. Make sure my microphone is not on during that, which hopefully it wasn't. So uh, Terry does a great job back there. We appreciate all he does. Well, we are continuing our sermon series today called In God We Trust. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at different scenes of Jesus uh, teaching about money and about finances and what that means for our lives today. And our scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And then he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be. With whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. I often hear some pretty interesting conversations when I'm out in public. Has this ever happened to y'all? You kind of hear some people talking in the background. You can hear some fascinating things sometimes. Sometimes you can find stuff better out there than you can find on TV. It's some really exciting stuff people are talking about. Have y'all ever seen a thing called elevator theology? You know what I'm talking about? Elevator theology is when you get into an elevator and some people in there are talking. And you get to hear some of the, some of the deep things of life that they're talking about. I remember one day I hopped onto an elevator and there were two people inside already having a heated discussion. So I just nodded politely to them and moved to the back so I could get out of their way. And I noticed that the man was making an argument like this. He was saying, if I had a million dollars... Boy, what I have it made. No, scratch that. Make that a billion dollars. Then, boy, what I have it made. And the woman calmly argued back, said, not me. She said, I just want enough to get by. Too much money causes too many problems. It's pretty good, isn't it? Theology in an elevator. I love it. Now, I remember there was a, a rap song when I was growing up called Mo Money, Mo Problems by the great American philosopher, the notorious B.I.G. I think Jesus would agree with that sentiment, that that lifestyle of more money, more stuff, more possessions is going to bring more problems into our lives, right? Someone in the crowd tries to drag Jesus into their family inheritance squabble. And I thought this was kind of strange, but people would do this. They would often ask rabbis to uh, intercede for them. Uh, maybe he thought that Jesus would rule in his favor and give him some more money. But the answer he gets from Jesus is, hey, man, that's not what I've come to do. That's not, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to, to settle petty financial squabbles. That's not my mission. And then Jesus speaks to the whole crowd when he says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. You know, I think Jesus could sense a little bit of greed in this man's request. And greed, of course, is that unquenchable desire to get more. To accumulate more than what is really necessary. And I want you to know this morning, just in case you're curious or you're confused, that Jesus is against all forms of greed, wherever they may be found in this world. And uh, you'll see in your bulletin, I titled this sermon, Jesus versus Wall Street. And when I say Wall Street, I, I'm not against the stock market. I, I have stocks. I've got a retirement fund that I'm trying to build. There's, there's nothing wrong with planning for the future. 
But there is something wrong with doing it without God at the very center of it all. When I say Wall Street, I'm talking about a mindset, a, a, a mentality, a way of life that we see around us. A culture of more, of bigger, of better, a cutthroat culture where we step on anybody who gets in our way. It's an attitude of greed. You may remember there was a, a movie back in 1987 entitled Wall Street, uh, starring Charlie Sheen and Michael Douglas. Uh, Charlie Sheen plays this young Wall Street broker who uh, wants to get to the top of the mountain. And Michael Douglas plays this extremely sleazy but extremely successful stockbroker named Gordon Gecko. Ed, why don't you throw that picture up there of Gordon Gecko? Doesn't he look sleazy to you? He's got that kind of 80s movie villain look to him. But, but Gordon Gecko, he had a philosophy of greed. He says this in the movie. He says, greed, for the lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Gordon Gecko takes Charlie Sheen's character under his wing during the movie, and he gets him all the stuff he wants, all the, all the money and the car and the women, everything that he's chasing, the so-called good life. But none of it works out. It all comes crashing down. But that, that's the gospel of Wall Street, isn't it? The gospel of stuff that, that so many people are living for today. Well, let's be clear this morning. Gordon Gecko is not a hero. Gordon Gecko is not a role model. And I have a feeling that Jesus would not get along with Gordon Gecko very well. Because Jesus teaches us something so different from, from the Wall Street culture. Jesus teaches us to be careful, to watch out, to be on our guard against some No, all kinds of greed. Right from the mouth of Jesus, God in the flesh, we find that the true meaning and purpose of life it's not about having a lot of money. It's not from having a lot of stuff. It's not from being able to, to outspend our neighbors down the street and have better cars and better toys than they do. That's very different from the gospel of this world. The gospel of Wall Street is summed up in a bumper sticker one time that was on the back of a car that said, the one who dies with the most toys wins. I don't know about that. Do you? That's what the uh, gospel of Wall Street looks like. But that's not what the gospel of the kingdom of God looks like. But have we in the church bought into that false gospel? Have we as Christians begin to buy into that idea that material possessions and stuff and money is what life is really all about? I'm afraid that many of us have. I'm afraid that too many of us here in the church have traded the gospel of Jesus for the gospel of stuff. Well, I've got a little secret for you guys this morning. The gospel of Wall Street can't bring us salvation. The gospel of stuff cannot walk beside you when you're going through a dark time in your life. The gospel of possessions cannot bring true joy and peace and meaning into your life. The gospel of what? cannot transform your heart into a new creation. Do you know why? Because it was never meant to do that. It's just stuff. And when we put stuff as the number one priority in our lives, we will find out how wrong that really is. Our God is a living God. Our God is active. He is moving. He is at work in the world. He's at work in this place. He's at work in us. Stuff can't do that. Material possessions can't do that. A rich man has a, a great year. His land yields an abundant harvest. He was very excited about this. He begins to have this debate with himself. What should I do? I've got nowhere to store all these crops. What should I do? That's an important question, isn't it? Not just for the man's crops, but also for us here today. Well, we should ask that question about our money and about our possessions. What should I do? You know, I found that many of us don't ask that question. Or we logically just assume that we know the answer already. So maybe the better question is, what would God have me to do with this? That's an uncomfortable question to ask. 
Because we know that often what we want versus what God may want are not the same thing. Remarkably, this man never stops to to thank God for his great year. Nor does he stop to ask God what he should do. The man says, this is what I'll do. I'll I'll pull down my barns. I'll build bigger ones. Do y'all see that theme of, of the Wall Street culture here? Bigger, better, newer, higher, more. That's the guy's mentality. That's the Wall Street mentality of our world, that bigger is better, that more is better, that newer is better. That's the problem with possessions, though. The more we keep accumulating, the more stuff we have to buy to be able to store all of our stuff. we got to build bigger barns. We have to build bigger houses. We have to build a bigger garage to, to store all of our stuff that won't fit in our houses. We, we have to go buy one of those uh, storage places where we can put more stuff because we can't fit everything in our house. Our lives become about storing up treasures here on earth, possessions here on earth, rather than what we can do to, to serve others, to help those around us. The guy thinks to himself, he says, well, congratulations, man, you finally arrived. Now it's time to kick back, relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Retirement, here I come. And this verse kind of sums up our mentality today as well. We're all working for, we're all striving for that time where we can just kick back, relax, eat, drink, and be merry for the rest of our lives. And we can care about ourselves and what we want to do. But then there's a, there's a twist ending to the story, isn't there? Instead of being able to enjoy everything he's been working for, God shows up on the scene and he says, you fool. You fool. Tonight's going to be your last night. Your soul is going to be required of you. What about all your stuff now? What's going to happen to all your stuff then? When God calls the man a fool, he's not saying it like we hear sometimes now that, oh, he's just a funny guy. He's silly. He's doing a bunch of funny things. No, fool in Scripture means a rebel, a denier of God. And so when he calls him a fool, he's saying that you are denying who I want you to be. Finally, this man is left with nothing. No time left to enjoy all of his stuff. Jesus says, so it is with us. If we store up treasures here on earth, but we are not rich toward God. I like that phrase, don't you? Rich toward God. Count me in for that. That's the kind of life that I want to live moving forward. That's the kind of life that I want to demonstrate to the rest of the world. But we can't do that if we're living for Wall Street at the same time. Because living for Jesus and living for Wall Street values don't mix. They never have. They never will. It's just not possible to to live it up for ourselves and also live for Jesus at the same time. Well, you may be wondering, why is Jesus so concerned with money? Is this just another way, Jack, for you to talk about giving money to the church? Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. This is a heart issue that Jesus is trying to get at. This is about what's going on inside of our hearts. Because Jesus knows that that what goes on in here affects everything else out there. Jesus is trying to to save us from greed. That desire to to get more than we actually need. He says that it will lead to destruction. When we as Christians make that claim that Jesus is Lord, we're saying that he's the Lord over our entire lives. And so we have to actually live out that claim when it comes to money. The bottom line this morning is that life is not about just getting more money, getting more stuff, getting newer toys, better things. Life is about God. Life is about living for God. Life is about becoming the people that God created us to be. I heard a story about um, the former Uh, Georgia Bulldogs coach, Coach Mark Rick. We all all know and love uh, Coach Rick. We've seen him on the sideline for many years. Uh, He and his family once owned a lake house on Lake Hartwell 
It was worth about $2 million. And one year, Mark Rick was reading a book entitled A Hole in the Gospel. It's a book written by uh, Rich Stearns. He's the president of World Vision. It's a book that deals with poverty and uh, those in need, the poor, helping out those who uh, need some things that we have already. And Mark Rick read this book, and he felt that the best way that he could be obedient to what he was hearing was to sell that lake house so that he could better provide for those who were in need. Here's what Rick had to say. He said, it helped me to realize that we have way more than what we need. And that our ability to give is hindered by this property. And we just wanted to be in a better position to give and bless those who don't have anything. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Well, Jack, what are we supposed to do with that? Are you telling us to go give up all of our land, go give up all of our stuff? No, that's not what I'm saying. I don't know what God may be speaking to your heart. What I do know is that I think we have to take a serious look at how we're using our money. How we're using the possessions that God has given to us. I think here's something good that all of us can do. I think we can all begin to sit down with our bank statements, or we can go online and pull up our checking account online. We can sit down with our Bibles, we can bring our families there, and we can start to have a prayer around this and say, God, we don't want to leave you out of this area of our lives. How can we honor you better financially? How can we glorify you with our money, with our possessions? What can we give? What can we sacrifice? Now, I've got to warn you, that's a dangerous prayer to pray. Because I think God will show you. I think God will answer that one. I think that Jesus is calling us away from the culture of Wall Street here. He's calling us away from that culture of more and better and newer and bigger and the good life. I think he's calling us towards simplicity and contentment, peace and generosity, love towards those around us. I love what uh, Christian writer C.S. Lewis once said. He said that nobody can settle how much we ought to give. He said the only safe rule is to give more than we can spare. Give more than we can spare. I love that. Give until it actually hurts a little bit. Give until it feels like a a sacrifice, and then we're going to be heading in the right direction. You know, I think we've all gotten the idea into our minds that we can leave God out of this area. Out of this area in our lives. God, you can have everything else, but my money is mine. God, I follow you. You belong to me. I belong to you. But this, I'm going to keep over here tucked away in my back pocket. There's only one problem with that, y'all. It's not biblical. It's not biblical at all. It all belongs to God. We all belong to God. What does he want us to do? How does he want us to live with our money and our finances? Where can our resources best be used for his kingdom, his church, his glory? Do we just keep on accumulating more and more and more? Do we just keep stockpiling money for ourselves? Or today, do we finally start to invite God in? Do we finally start to ask God to come into this area as God was meant to be all along? Greed is not good. Greed is not right. Greed doesn't work. Gordon Gecko was wrong. Generosity is good. Generosity is right. Generosity works. Hawkinsville first, you heard it straight from Jesus. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Y'all, let's go live for something better. 
Let's go live for something more. Let's go live our lives in service to Jesus Christ, his kingdom, and his church. What do you say? Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, we know that the the world around us has a a certain culture, Wall Street culture, a, a bigger culture, newer, better. Lord, we've lived into that in the past, but we want to make a change today. We want to be transformed into new and different people. Lord, we want to become people of of generosity, people who live with open hands, people who live with thanksgiving, not just one day out of the year, but every single day, thankful for who you are, thankful for what you've given to us, thankful that we can use what you've given us to bless the whole world around us. May we go to live that out, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.